Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, December 2nd. I'm Wayne Pratt. Missouri lawmakers will discuss Medicaid expansion during the 2021 legislative session, which begins next month. They say all possibilities are on the table. I expect that there will be voices who feel like there was no funding mechanism that was attached to the drafting of the amendment, and so therefore the legislature isn't bound to pass it. St. Louis Public Radio's Jacqueline Driscoll has more on what the program may look like in Missouri in just a few minutes. The St. Louis County Health Department is coming down on restaurants that are violating indoor dining restrictions during the pandemic. Health officials have moved to close five restaurants. Satchmo's Bar and Grill, Acapulco Restaurant, Bartolino South, Final Destination, and O.T.'s Bar. The county says four have been notified that their operating permits have been suspended. Acapulco Restaurant on St. Charles Rock Road is facing a shutdown if it continues to violate the order. Each restaurant received three written warnings before more drastic action was taken. The eateries have 10 days to request a hearing. This move by the county health department came hours yesterday after some Republican lawmakers announced they want to make it more difficult for local governments to enact COVID-19 restrictions. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports. Republican Senator Andrew Koenig of Manchester is filing legislation that would substantially limit the ability for county leaders to enact COVID-19 restrictions. It comes as some Republicans have sharply criticized Page for curtailing indoor dining in the county's eateries. Page recently won a contentious election where his COVID-19 orders were a key point of contention, But Koenig says that doesn't give him free reign when businesses are being harmed. We govern underneath a set of of laws and we have a constitutional republic and we don't we don't we don't live in a a society that's mob rule. A spokeswoman for Governor Mike Parson, who has backed local control, says the governor expects the legislature to address the issue of local COVID-19 restrictions next year. I'm Jason Rosenbaum. St. Louis Public Radio. And St. Louis County Council members are weighing in. They have narrowly voted in favor of a resolution disapproving several of County Executive Sam Page's COVID-19 restrictions. They include occupancy limits and barring indoor dining. The resolution includes exceptions for the county's mask mandate for people working out in gyms or playing outdoor sports. A page spokesman says the resolution has no impact on the administration's ability to enforce COVID-19 orders, and the entire thing may end up in court. In other news, residents in Wentzville and surrounding towns are noticing an odd smell. As St. Louis Public Radio's Corinne Ruff reports, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources is looking into some reported musty and chemical odors. Last month, Wentzville Mayor Nick Gucciani got a flood of messages from residents saying the air smelled like a wet basement. Others said it gave them sinus headaches. The Missouri Department of Natural Resources has since identified a chemical smell coming from the General Motors plant, but says the company hasn't violated any odor regulations. The department hasn't yet traced the source of the musty mildew smell. Mayor Gucciani says he's doing everything he can to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, I'm very concerned about it. I'm, I don't want it to be an irritant. It's going to irritate somebody's respiratory. Uh, we got enough issues with COVID that that could be a concern for health The department is encouraging residents to report any information about the odors to its St. Louis regional office. I'm Corinne Ruff, St. Louis Public Radio. The longtime leader of the Muni at Forest Park is stepping down. Denny Reagan has announced he will retire as the Outdoor Theater's president and CEO late next year. He's been in that role since 1991. Reagan originally started with the Muni back in the 60s. He is planning to stay on at the theater as a senior advisor. Missouri voters approved expanding Medicaid in August. It's now up to the state legislature to get a program in place in the 2021 legislative session, which begins next month. But as St. Louis Public Radio's Jacqueline Driscoll reports, lawmakers may try to limit the expansion of that public health plan for the poor or even put a stop to it. 
Voters approved the constitutional amendment to expand Medicaid by about seven percentage points. But State Representative Mary Elizabeth Coleman, a Republican from Arnold, says everything is on the table when considering how it'll look in Missouri. That includes whether there's a program at all. I expect that there will be voices who feel like there was no funding mechanism that was attached to the drafting of the amendment, and so therefore the legislature isn't bound to pass it. Coleman is a mom of five, and our phone conversations are often adorably interrupted. While finding socks and shoes, Coleman compared Medicaid expansion to her experience with Catholic school and tuition. The analogy that I kind of think about is like parochial schools across the country have had fewer children, and as they have fewer children, they've had to raise their tuition. And as they've raised their tuition, they've had fewer children, and it becomes kind of a death spiral for the school. And I worry that we'll see similar patterns uh, within our healthcare industry. Coleman's concern the cost of Medicaid expansion will get passed on to those using private insurance. There are a couple studies that suggest this, but many others show it wasn't the case in states that have expanded Medicaid. The program is going to include upfront costs, but how much is unclear. In a statement, Budget Chair Cody Smith, a Republican from Carthage, said the legislature is in a, quote, budgetary predicament and said money will have to be diverted away from other programs. But outgoing state representative Kip Kendrick, the ranking minority member of the Budget Committee, says he doesn't think it's going to be near as much as what some are suggesting. I don't think that they're anywhere near uh, the 200 plus million or actually we've heard, you know, 300 million in costs. Uh, but I do expect, you know, anywhere, a cost from anywhere from 10 to up to, I would think, upwards of 70, 75 million for a new decision item in general revenue. Remember, the program comes with a federal match. 90% of costs associated with expansion will be covered by the federal government. Regardless of the expense, it'll be a tough sell not to implement expansion at all. The passage of Amendment 2 meant it expanded the populations that have access to the program, mainly single adults. Chuck Hatfield, an attorney who specializes in government-related issues, says if lawmakers try not to fund it, that means doing away with Medicaid in the state altogether. The law seems pretty clear that the legislature can't go in and say, well, we're only going to fund part of the Medicaid program. You have to fund it all or you can't fund any of it. I think that if there is an effort to avoid complying with the Constitution, I think cooler heads will prevail. Even Governor Mike Parson, who was a vocal advocate against expansion, says voters approved it, so it needs to be done. But we'll fully support Medicaid. People voted for that. We're going to have to pay for it out of general revenue. Some conservatives may try to work around paying for expansion, but it's more likely lawmakers will be focusing on how to fund it. Coleman says one of the more widely considered options is imposing work requirements in an effort to minimize who can access coverage. This was sold to Missourians as a way to provide health insurance for the working poor. And so making sure that people are working in order to get that benefit doesn't seem like it won't be. I just, I can't imagine that we're not going to be talking about that as well. Even work requirements get murky. Arkansas was the first state to pass them in 2018. It resulted in 17,000 adults losing coverage in a three-month time span with no significant changes in employment. A New England Journal of Medicine study found that most lost coverage because of confusion about the reporting process or lack of awareness. Because of this, a federal judge put a stop to the work requirements, and federal courts have also struck them down in Indiana, Michigan, and New Hampshire. State Representative Sarah Unsicker, a Democrat from Shrewsbury, is a proponent of expansion, but also said taking a closer look and reforming the Medicaid program is past due. Our total spending on participant benefits ranks number third in this country per recipient. So we are spending a lot more on coverage, and I don't know where that money is going. Lawmakers could also try to put expansion back on the ballot, similar to what they did this November, undoing the so-called Clean Missouri Amendment voters approved in 2018. Like Coleman said, everything is on the table. It's difficult to predict what the program will look like, but one thing is certain, it will be an important topic of discussion in the 2021 general session. In Jefferson City, I'm Jacqueline Driscoll, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.